the tortured explanation for why we have to bring this up again as, um, you know, we've moved from Groundhog Day, as annoying as that is, to Groundhog Month. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Hate to flog a groundhog, but, um, you know, we've moved from Groundhog Day, as annoying as that is, to Groundhog Month, because um, here we are with another week that is shaping up to be as chaotic and useless as last week, while critical issues are going unaddressed. Um, the speaker has served up a calendar of do-overs for this week on legislation that already failed to pass the House at least once, like the Mayorkas impeachment or the rule for the SALT bill, or bills like this one before this committee, which has already passed the House a couple times in different formats. So our constituents are rightly asking why the speaker's wasting everyone's time on meaningless bills when there's work to be done. The answer is depressingly simple it does not appear that House Republicans are able to govern. They can't organize themselves. They can't work with their Senate counterparts. They can't work with the White House for the public benefit. And all they seem to care about is placating their noisiest, most extreme members. And they certainly don't seem to care about solving problems or producing results for the American people. Here's a news flash for our colleagues on the other side of the aisle. The American people don't want antics and stunts and fake impeachments. They want solutions to the problems they're dealing with. They want a government that works better for them, not for politicians with their eye on the next election. So let's look at the bill before us, H.R. 7176, as we have several times before. Um, I've got a number of objections to the bill. First, of course, is that we've already passed this legislation, and it's now being brought up just to have something, anything to talk about this week, rather than national security or some of the really pressing issues here, the tortured explanation for why we have to bring this up again, as if there haven't been centuries of precedent where when a member retires or passes away, another member's name is just sub, uh, submitted to, as a replacement sponsor. I mean, it's absurd. So this is just legislative noise, meaningless filler to make up for the House Republicans' failure to consider or pass military aid for our allies, humanitarian aid for those most in need, a border deal, or a bipartisan agreement on a budget that's been overdue since September. So that's number one. The second is this bill is a huge handout to big oil and gas that is going to force American families to pay more in energy costs. Estimates say that this bill would increase home heating prices for American families by billions in the next year and a half after it's enacted. When supporters of this bill say it's in the public interest, they mean it's in the interest of their supporters in big oil and gas who expect to reap record profit selling American fuel overseas. That's not putting Americans first or promoting US energy independence. The US is already the world's largest exporter of LNG. We export more than Russia, Iran, and the oil-rich Gulf states. Under the leadership of President Biden and with policies passed in the Inflation Reduction Act, the US now stands to be a world leader in energy production, both in green energy and oil and gas. And finally, I, I appreciate Ranking Member Pallone um, correcting the record that the White House has not issued a ban on LNG exports. And in fact, current exports and projected exports are going to continue. This is just a pause on approvals for new LNG exports. And that's really important to the community that I represent, because I represent a frontline community that is most at risk from the serious hazards associated with facilities that export LNG overseas. For that reason, I fully support the pause on um, new application for facilities for exporting LNG. We need time to evaluate the climate, health, safety, and economic risks of increasing LNG production and export, particularly for frontline communities like Chester, Pennsylvania. Look, overall, we're running out of time to meet our climate goals. And whatever short-term benefits Republicans may think they get from expanded LNG export, that may be greatly overshadowed by the risks to the communities forced to host those export facilities, the climate-related disasters to come, and the increased prices to American consumers. I don't think we should continue down this path. Each year, we're watching the climate disasters increase, whether it's Florida and the Gulf, course, Gulf Coast getting slammed by stronger hurricanes, 
or extreme weather events including tornadoes and extreme flooding in southeastern Pennsylvania. So I strongly oppose this bill. I urge my Republican colleagues to quickly bring up a vote on aid to our allies, and I would yield back. Can Mr. I? Colon, uh, did you have something? Yeah, you just briefly, to say? if you would yield yeah. to me. You know, the thing that um, most concerns me about Chairman Duncan's statement was the statement where he said that, uh, you know, this should be an open market and we should be able to sell, you know, the oil and gas companies should be able to sell whatever they want to anybody. Uh, I mean, that's not the way this works. I mean, you've got OPEC, right? You've got these countries that are our adversaries that, um, you know, decide how much oil or gas they're going to produce. Um, you know, based on their own self-interest, right? I mean, they, you know, Saudi Arabia decides we're going to increase uh, production or we're going to reduce production so that they can monopolize and control the price. And, and for us to just say, that's okay, you know, we'll let just them decide everything, is just, it's not, it's wrong. Uh, I mean, the problem is when you have this, if you buy into that, uh, then you're basically saying we're not going to in any way control the market um, for what is produced here that can be used here. And I just don't buy into that. I just don't. And, and the other thing uh, that uh, the Chairman Duncan said is that, you know, this, uh, public, this pause is going to go on indefinitely. That's not the case. I mean, the administration has made it quite clear that, you know, this could take a few months or so, but they're not pausing this indefinitely, uh, not by any means. So. You know, what we're really saying is that the law now allows for this public interest analysis on individual applications as well as a process. And the administration is saying, you know, before we uh, look at additional applications, uh, we want to look at the process of how we decide what's in the public interest in general. And that's only helpful to the American people. Let's not just do everything that big oil and gas wants. That's what I think this bill is all about. But. I yield um, back. Thank you. Thank I think, you, General I think I have to agree with you that the public interest has to be far beyond what, what's good for big oil and big gas, though obviously we are um, a capitalist economy, but we also have an obligation to protect our American consumers, make sure they can heat their homes, um, and protect the safety of the folks who are most directly impacted by these export facilities. So I appreciate your raising those points, as well as raising the fact that this is not a ban on export, that exports will continue in large measure. Um, and with that, I would yield back. <laughs> gentlelady yields back, Chair. Thanks to Gentlelady. The lady from Minnesota is recognized for quick. Rather than national security or some of the really pressing issues here, it does not appear that House Republicans are able to govern. They can't organize themselves, which has already passed the House a couple times in different formats. So our constituent. And it's now being brought up just to have something, anything to talk about this way. Another member's name is just sub, uh, submitted to, as a replacement sponsor. 